So, ladies and gentlemen, first and foremost, anytime you see a problem like this, the first thing we want to do is create a triangle. Visualize. I just put up your quiz. I can tell you there's not one triangle written up there. I give you the links, but you need to draw what the triangle is. So, first thing we're going to do, draw a triangle. It doesn't really matter, guys, what your triangle looks like. Um, you can go ahead and fill everything in later. Or if you have an obtuse angle, you know, you can worry about that at a different time. Okay? But I want you guys to see from this information now, we have a side side angle, right? So we have an ambiguous case. So we have a possibility of case two, correct? So what I'm gonna do is automatically I'm gonna say this is case number one, and I'm gonna write in here is case number two. It's possible that there is no case number two, right? There's possible that there's only one triangle. That was an example of one triangle, okay? It's possible that no triangle exists, right? But there's also a possibility that there's two cases. I'm gonna write this down so I don't forget, okay? Because there's gonna be a lot of math that I'm about to start doing. So the first thing I look at is using the law of sines, what should I solve for? What, what, I have a ratio of B over sine of B, so therefore, the only other information I have is side of C, right? So it makes sense then for me to solve for uh, angle C. Does that make sense? Yes? No? So since I'm, since I'm solving for an angle, I'm going to want to make sure my angles are in my numerator. So I will have the sine of 38 degrees all over 21 divided by sine of C all over 25. Multiply by 25 on both sides. Sine of C equals um, 25 sine. times sine of 38 degrees all over 21. C equals sine inverse of whatever that answer is. So in your calculator, you can do that separately, which I would recommend, or you can type it into your calculator. So I'm going to kind of reiterate the three steps that people make mistakes on. Usually it's the people that are typing in on their calculator and not paying attention or not listening. So the three co most common mistakes. First most common mistake, students use the formulas wrong. They use law of cosines when they should have been using law of sines. They plug in the answers for the wrong angles, whatever. Just simple errors of using the wrong formulas or entering in the wrong formulas. Step number two, the most common mistakes. Not following the order of operations. Guys, you can type this all into your calculator, but it's not that much faster, just, or it's not that much slower, just to type it in one by one following the order of operations. Just do 25 times the sine of 38, enter, divide by 21, enter, and then do sine inverse of that last answer, enter. That really wasn't that much slower, was it? And I got 47.13. So then the next thing you want to do, my answer is equal to 47.13261961. Now, we're going to be using this angle again. This is C, right? We're going to be using this angle again. So I want to store that angle. So all you got to do to store it is just hit store, and then I'm going to hit alpha C. Obviously, I want to store it as alpha C. Okay. However, when I write my answer, I don't need to write the whole answer. I'll write the approximate answer, which is 47.133. Now, let's see if there's a second case, OK? Actually, you know what? Yeah, let's go and check to see if there's another case. Let's see if we could have another angle. So I'm going to do C2 equals 180 minus C. So I'll just do 180 minus alpha C. And I get 132.867.3804. Guys, is it possible for C to be 132.86? Actually, why didn't I draw my triangle? I'm sorry about that. Is it possible for this to be 132.867? Yeah. Do we still have room for this angle? Yes. So guess what? We do have two cases now. You have two cases. You could have the you could have an obtuse angle, 
or you can have an acute angle. All right? But I'm going to leave this on there for a second. I'm going to deal with this later. I'll come back to that. So, but we have a second case, which is going to be our C2, which I'll get to in a second. But now we found C. Can we figure out what A is? Yes. Angle A equals 180 degrees minus 38 degrees minus C. Do not use your answer, abbreviate answer. Either type in the whole angle or store it into your calculator and use that value. Do not use this, which is my third most common mistake. Is students will use the rounded answer and they'll get a rounding error at the very end. They'll be off by a one thousandth or one hundredth of a um, decimal or value. So I'm just going to do 180 minus 38 <coughs> minus alpha C. And I get A is equal to 94.8678039. Now again, I'm going to want to use that value again. So I'm going to store that as A. So I'm going to hit store alpha A. Now that's stored. But when I write my answer up here, I'm going to round it to 94.867. So if I follow? Yes? OK. Now, the last part we have is we need to find A. Now, we could use any ratio. I would recommend using the ratio that you already have, which is B over B, to solve for A. Now, the important thing, guys, is why I stored this in my calculator is because when I do my ratio, um, now I'm solving for A. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this. 21 over the sine of 38 equals A over the sine of A. Does everybody see how I flipped the, my ratios? <coughs> Instead of doing this ratio, I'm using this ratio. The reason why that's helpful is because now I can solve for A in the numerator. And all I got to do is multiply by sine of A, which is stored in my calculator. So therefore, A is equal to 21 sine of A divided by the sine of 38. So in my calculator, I do 21 times the sine of alpha A divided by the sine of 38. And I get A equals 33.987. Yep. OK, I'll explain that in a second. But for actually, right now, we just got to go move on for that. So I, again, originally, though, we found out we have a second case. My angle C could be 147, or it could also be 180 minus C, which is 132.867.3804. So let me go back and store this again. And let me draw my triangle. You can see how much work I'm spending here. So let's see, I have 38. This is 132.867. This is 25. This is 21. And I don't know any other information. So I got to figure out what that value is. So I'm going to do 180 minus C. So I do 180 minus alpha C. And that gives me 132. So that's going to be C2. But I'm going to change, I'm going to store this as my new C. So I'll do alpha C. Shoot. Sorry, I didn't store that. Store as alpha C. Come on. OK. Store as alpha C. Good. Now, to figure out what A is, A is going to equal 180 minus my new stored C. I already did that over there, but I'm going to do that one more time with my new C. So I do 180 minus 38 minus alpha C. And I get my new A is, that's not right. Oh, 
Why didn't you store? Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't store that. Store alpha C. Good. 180 minus 38 minus alpha C. There we go. A is 9.13261969. Now I'm going to store that as my new A. So I'll hit store alpha A. Then the last thing I need to do, guys, to solve For this a is again use another um, use uh, again my law of sines. So therefore, I have a over the sine of a equals 21 over the sine of b. I'm sorry, sine of 38, and then multiply by sine of a on both sides. So you get 21 times the sine of alpha a divided by the sine of 38. A lot of work. And then what you would do is just fill in that rest of that triangle. So 